The United Nations Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Hana Serwatete, delivered the warning on Monday, describing the situation as unprecedented. The protracted conflict, which has now entered its seventh month, is characterized by intense clashes between Sudan's military and a rival paramilitary force, the Rapid Support Forces, RSF. Tete emphasized the recent seizure of an airport and an oil field in Balila, located approximately 55 kilometers southwest of Sudan's West Kordofan state capital, as a significant sign of the conflict's progression. Speaking before the UN Security Council, Tete stressed that the conflict is taking a severe toll on the diplomatic relations between Sudan and South Sudan. Furthermore, it has led to severe humanitarian, security, economic and political consequences that have greatly concerned South Sudan's political leadership. The origins of the crisis can be traced back to April, when simmering tensions between Sudan's military and the RSF erupted into an open warfare in the capital city Khartoum and various other regions across the East African nation. According to the Armed Conflict Location and Events Data Project, over 9,000 people have lost their lives in the ongoing conflict, while more than 4.5 million have been forced to abandon their homes within Sudan, and another 1.2 million have sought refuge in neighboring countries. The recent Security Council meeting highlighted the UN peacekeeping force in the oil rich Abir region, which remains a state of uncertainty following South Sudan's independence from Sudan in 2011. The majority Gunk Dinkan people in Abe favor alignment with South Sudan, while the Masuria nomads, who depend on the area for their cattle, support Sudan. Can you bring me a word? Lab would the Sahib Kaga, who were the Melkasta, could be a bilash, would the Hanalagas so or the Ramel Walpa, come Amulo, a conkaga, a carcaga, bring me a punk, less with the Gmanta, or Kumare Kunhormari, no shadow the Kale. Premier Wallet.